Hey guys, I'm Amy Whalen. Welcome or welcome back to Table Flipping Housewife. The project I'm working on today will be these two chairs. This one was given to me by a coworker. It's very wobbly. There are some areas I know I can glue to reinforce, but I don't know if I can be successful in reinforcing all four of the legs. We'll see. If not, I'll let this one go. But we're definitely gonna be working on this one. It's a Queen Anne chair given to me by another coworker and it has removable cushion seats. So what I'm going to be doing ultimately is, <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna say this, I'm going to be making University of Georgia chairs. I know, I know, it's breaking this girl's heart, go Tigers, but when in Rome, right? I'm in the Atlanta area, so UGA it is. So come join me. but I need to first take out the old glue. So I'm going to be using a craft heat gun, um, but you can purchase heat guns at any hardware store. If you're going to be re-gluing something, you need to remove the old glue and put in new glue in order for it to be a good fix. Okay, that's not going to work. Ah! All right. How in the world do you put a clamp on a spindle chair like this? So here's the next best thing. I'm going to take my flip-flop. This is the piece that I glued. Looks like a tight fit to me. Each leg has a screw that goes in. What I'm going to do is secure each leg with one more screw each. Just opposite what's already there. This has sanded a lot better than I thought it would. This had a lot of latex paint on it, and oftentimes when you try to sand thick latex paint, it just kind of, it rubberizes. It just kind of pills up into little balls, and that didn't really happen here. I think what I'll do is take a rest, and in the morning, put another squishy pad on it, a finer grade, 220, give it one last sanding, and then clean it, and then it'll be put aside for painting. Now this chair, when Susan gave it to me, probably a year ago, I had started working on it. So this one's already been cleaned. I presume I also sanded it, I'm not quite sure. So what I'm going to do is give it a quick run over with some 220 grit sandpaper. I have the interface pad on here to give me a little cushion. I'll put the pad on top of that. It'll enable me to go around the curved edges without destroying those edges. I have black paint in my sprayer right now because I'm working on a different project. I think I might go ahead and paint these chairs black. Indecision. Hmm. So I just finished painting that other piece black that I mentioned, and I do have ample paint. So I am going to start spraying the chair. Now I have the chair turned upside down so that I can adequately spray all of the legs, the underside, everything, you know me. I like things to be pretty top, bottom, and side. So I'm going to start spraying the bottom, I'll turn the chair over, and then I'll finish painting the rest of the chair.
Now I'm going to go ahead and prime the raw wood spots with this um, Zinger Bullseye 123. It's not because I'm worried about bleed through, but when I do paint this white, I wanna make sure that when the white paint hits the chair, it doesn't settle on the raw wood differently than it would on these areas that still have paint. It's feeling a bit powdery to the touch. I've taken a very used 220 grit, so it's, it's hardly any grit left at all. And I'm going to lightly scuff sand um, the primer off and then I'll be ready to paint it. Okay, so I've wiped off all the dust from sanding. We're ready to paint. I'm going to be using Valspar's cabinet and furniture paint in the color Ivory Dust, my new favorite white. I've already filtered the paint. When I put it in my Wagner, I added maybe a teaspoon of water and I have five ounces, four and a half ounces of paint in here, which I don't intend on using all of it. But anyway, let's get started. blinding to be staring at a white chair in the full sun spray painting. <laughs> I found a seat cushion at Goodwill for two dollars. After having made a pattern of the seat of the white chair, I drew the outline onto the foam and cut it out. I used the same pattern to cut out two pieces of fabric. With those two pieces, I sewed them together, inserted that foam, and I had a nice cushion for the white chair. I then took more fabric and stapled it to the seat of the black chair. I then secured the seat to the frame of the chair with the existing screws. If this is the kind of content that interests you and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or any constructive comments, please leave a comment below because I have really enjoyed answering every single one of them. All right, so I've tacked down this and now I'm going to pull this front corner flat like that so that it is as smooth as possible there.